Hi and welcome to my channel. Uh, today I'm going to be doing a Twitter bot on the Raspberry Pi using the Python script. Um, it's pretty easy to do. Um, should only take you an hour or so to, to put it all together. And what I'm using it for is to automatically tweet out messages, uh, random messages that I've predefined every day at two o'clock, um, tweeting a, a, an image and a bit of message as well just to help direct people to the different posts that I've got going on at the moment. So um, got the Raspberry Pi there, it's in the um, the motion detector um, sort of camera box at the moment, not for any particular reason. Um, we're not going to use any camera or the motion detector and we're linked up um, to the remote desktop on the computer so here we go. Okay, so first we open up the Raspberry Pi on our remote desktop and I'm going to go to Google and go to the Twitter developer page. Now I'm already logged into my Twitter account or one of my Twitter accounts. Um, so I'm straight in there. I don't have to sign in any further, so I've already done that. I'm going to manage your apps at the bottom. So in here we create a new app and we can call it what we want, but I'm going to call it Twitterbot9999. Sometimes it's a little bit funny with names. If one's already taken it, we won't let you do it, but I don't know if it's you that's taken it or someone else has taken it. I don't know. Anyway, description, again, put anything you want. I think it's a minimum of 10 characters if you just want to do blah. Um, but it helps you if you've got lots of different applications. Website, you don't need to have a website. This is just for marketing purposes. So you can put any website down if you like, and you don't need anything for the callback URL. So agree it and click yes, and obviously get the website with the HTTP, which I didn't do the first time around. And there you go, if you want to create your new application. Now there's a few things you need to check first. Need to go into the permissions area and make sure that you can read and write and that's the default setting you can't see it on this particular browser but it is ticked as read and write um, and then go into your keys and access tokens now there's four that you need the first two their consumer key and consumer secret api secret they're the two and then there's two more you need to generate by clicking that create my access tokens button at the bottom and once you've reloaded you'll get another couple of keys there, access token and access token secret. Now we'll need these in a little bit, but for now we can just leave them where they are. Okay, so what we're going to do is use Twyphon, if I can pronounce that right, um, in the um, Python library. So we need to install that if we haven't already. So sudo pip install Twyphon, T-W-Y-T-H-O-N run that you'll get a few prompts yeses and so on but i've already done it so i'm not going to do it again what i'm going to do now is actually go straight to the python code now i've already started creating the python code just to make it a little bit easier so it's twitterbots.py as a new fold a new file and straight away i've typed in from twice then import twice then that was just the, um, the module we installed earlier and i've set up some variables for the different authorization keys and then this final line twitter is just setting up that twitter connection so here we go we start copying them through into each one i wouldn't recommend typing them in i think you probably must make a mistake of them especially the long ones but cut and paste is the coders best friend that's if you actually manage to cut and paste it properly which i didn't do then but you know we, we keep pushing on so we keep going nearly there who said programming wasn't fun okay so now we've got all that in place we can run it f5 to run it's ran there's no errors but nothing happened because we haven't made anything happen yet we've just made sure it will connect to twitter and those keys work fine so next we're going to put some code in to send a message so we're using the twitter that we set up just before um to update status with media all lowercase this update status with media has a weird error message, but it does work, so I'm using it. So the media at the moment will just leave it as a variable. I'm 
the status was as usual, hello world. Now we just need to set up the photograph. So the photograph is in a folder that I've already set up. Um, it's just a, a random image for now. And you've got to make sure the spelling is exactly right. On this particular image, I've got uppercase JPEG, and that caught me out a few times when I was developing it. And then just open up that photo file with this particular line, this open, open tweet for RB. So once we've done that, we can save it and we can run it and we can see if that tweet goes out. So it worked. We had a warning, but it's not an error. We can now go on to Twitter. So we go back down to Google and away to Twitter. Go straight to Twitter. And again, I'm already signed in, but this particular browser gives you a mobile version for whatever reason. Now, I've done some tweets before testing it, um, but you can see that Hello World has gone there just a few moments ago, and the photograph is in there as well. A very random photograph in my greenhouse of a water sprinkling system. Okay, so now we know that works, what we need to do now is make it a little bit more interesting than sending a, the same tweet out every single day. We need to set up a number of messages. So what I'm going to do now is import a random uh, function library. Once I just set these variables up, so we're going to change that from message, we're going we're to set up all these as variables. Okay, so we import random. So what we're going to do is we're going to generate a random number. Now in this instance, it's going to be a random number between one and four. So we set up a variable for that called random number. And then it's random dot rand int one word and uh, brackets one comma four close brackets. So actually your lowercase is your one lowercase. Your lower number is the one and your higher number is the four. And then we can we can make it print out that random number again just so we can see what number it's generating so now what we're going to do is a series of conditional if statements so we're going to look is the random number one and if it is one then we're going to set up the the variables to be you know, whatever they are, random message one or you know, whatever it is it's going to be. We're also going to set up the tweet photograph as well. So that's going to be an image, you know, whatever that's going to be. But if it isn't one, it could be something else. So we look at the next line and it will be EL, which is short for else. So if it's one, else do this. So this is on the else side of it. We're going to look to see, is it random number two? Again, we've got to make sure that these are lowercase on these commands, but it'll tell you with a color code, it changes orange, which helps you. So equals two, and then we can go on and so on and so forth to sort of random message um, three and, you know, random message, um, uh, random number, sorry, four. But there's an easier way to do this. And what I've basically done in Excel is I've set up a very simple template which uses the first four columns, well, the first sort of three columns, really, um, and then generates that code for you by concatenating words together. So that way we can easily add additional messages, change messages without having to rewrite code or anything like that. So I copy it into a text file. And this, again, is on my laptop. Um, save that, then using Win... It's WinSVP or something like WinSP. I can't remember. Now. Um, but using the file transfer um, software, WinSCP. There we go. We take that file, copy it across, back onto the remote desktop for the Pi. We can open up that file. We can grab that text, and then we can just cut and paste it into there, so we don't have to type it all in. The only thing we cut and paste on the Pi is it never deletes what you've got selected which is a bit frustrating I do that all the time and I will get used to it at some point um, but for now it's just causing me a few problems as you will see in a moment 
Okay, so what I've done is with the images as well now, just to point out, is this the full file path right from the home directory. And the reason I've done that, it will work relatively, relative to the folder that you're in, when you're in it on this, from this sort of side of things. But as soon as we go to automate it and schedule it a little bit further on, then it won't do it that way. It won't allow you to do it. So you have to do it from the home directory. So we'll save it and we'll run it and we get an error message. Again, that's because of that cut and paste I did earlier. So I should delete that bit out that was left over. Um, run it again. We'll save it and run it again. And it works. We can see what it's done, and what, what images and what messages it's printed out. We can go back to Twitter, refresh it. Oh, yep, it's all the old one. Refresh it again. And there we go. Random message to the other picture in just a few moments ago. So the next step is to automate this Python script. So what we do now is go into command prompt and type in sudo cron tab dash e. And that takes you into an editor of this particular file. Now right at the very bottom, and I've already added one here, I need to change that actually, um, is I've added in a little bit of code. So it's, it's all around the sort of minutes, hours, days. Um, so here I'm using zero as the minute, 14 as the hour, and it was two o'clock in the afternoon. But basically the stars relate to every day, you know, and just keep doing it every day. Um, there's a little bit more on my blog about how that works, <clears throat> but it l puts down what script it needs to execute. Then finally, what's the log file it's going to print to. And the log file is, is kind of helpful, but it's not essential. Um, so there we go. So we control, C, um, control X, I think it is, to save that and then just reboot the Pi. So once that's rebooted, you can leave it running. Every day at two o'clock, it will tweet out a message for you randomly from the list that you provided. Obviously, you can make that list into two or 300 tweets if you want to do. Um, and there we go, really great. So um, yeah, nice and simple, and um, hope you enjoyed it. Take care.